Well, I know you all saw the same thing I saw. I'm right off the heels of watching UFC 260, Stipe versus Francis 2, with my family. And I'm just going to come out and say it. I had Stipe winning however he wanted. By knockout, by rest, by just wrestle fuck, just all that. I had him winning by unanimous decision again. And I was wrong. Francis made that look easy. He stuffed the takedown, showed excellent combos, precision striking, the ability to dodge well. And he was the better fighter tonight. Simply the only way to say it. My hat's off to Francis and Ganu. You know, they're now 1-1. But Francis is the heavyweight championship of the world. Is of Francis and Ganu is the heavyweight champion of the world. And John Jones was promised the heavyweight champion after this fight was done. Me personally, I think a trilogy is necessary because Stipe has been the champion for so long. Unless he feels like retiring, I think you got to run that back. It's 1-1 on some Dustin and Connor shit. You know what I mean? It's 1-1. Give Stipe the chance he deserves. And I think if he loses again, he's going to retire as one of the greatest heavyweights of all time. Just not the greatest. We know now that... You know, it's a real possibility that Francis Ngannou could be the greatest heavyweight we've seen of all time. Especially if he beats John Jones. I mean, we all witnessed an incredible fight tonight between Stipe and Ngannou. Ngannou put on a beautiful showcase of how powerful he is and how far he's come since the last fight. But it's just, oh God, the fight we have coming up ahead of us. John Jones versus Ngannou. That's going to be one of, as Joe Rogan said, one of the biggest fights of all time history. Okay, of all time mixed martial arts history. You have John Jones, arguably people call him the Michael Jordan of mixed martial arts versus Francis Ngannou, the scariest motherfucker there is in the UFC. Just knocked out who was supposed to be the greatest heavyweight of all time and made it look easy, by the way. Made it look easy, okay? Made it look easy, okay? In the first fight, Francis Ngannou versus Stipe won. Francis did not win a single round. Francis clearly won the first round of this fight. Okay, the moment you see that, you know this is a different fight. Okay? And, you know, whenever people lose, they always seem to discredit the loser instead of giving credit to the winner. You know? Don't discredit Stipe. Give... And Ganu, the credit he deserves, he saw the flaws from the first fight, went to someone like Kamara Usman, who we knew could was the master of wrestling, could really help him work out those flaws, and made the adjustments he needed to make to become the heavyweight champion of the world. I mean, who do I think is going to win between Francis and Bones? I mean, look, Bones is obviously a lot more experienced. He's had 15, what, 15 title fights now, won all of them, hasn't lost a fight hasn't really lost a fight ever if we're going to be honest with you had some disqualifications had some problems with USADA it is what it is we all know the story but his wrestling is definitely going to be superior than Francis's I think that goes without saying just based on what we've seen on John before and the fact that John has just been doing this much longer okay let's say Francis started wrestling from the moment the Stipe fight the first Stipe fight ended okay that's still a fifth of the amount of time that John's been doing it, okay? And at a championship level, too, against killers, okay? However, let's not sit here and act like John Jones hasn't looked worse against his last three opponents, okay? Arguably, his opponents have been getting better, yes. Does that mean he's been getting worse for sure? No, it does not mean that for sure. But if we're going to sit here and act... Like, Jones can't get knocked out by Ngannou. That's a lie. Because Jones is building up to 245 right now, right? He used to cut down to 205 slightly. He's building up to get the muscle mass to be a heavyweight. And Ngannou cuts down to 265. He could easily be 300 pounds by the time they walk into that cage. Okay? I may be okay. I'm exaggerating. 300 is a bit of a hyperbole. But you know what I mean. You're fighting someone who's cutting down to your rate weight rather than you bulking up. It's the exact same thing we saw with Stylebender versus Yon. 
it doesn't matter how good your skills are at a certain point that weight gap is just too much for any skill to clear once you've got a man who's 50 pounds 60 pounds heavier on top of you you can't get any space between you you can't make any action happen to get to wriggle out it's a lot bigger of a problem that i see people bringing it up as jones is going to be 250 at best fighting someone who's cutting down to 265 oh and by the way he's one of the scariest knockout artists of all of all time oh and by the way he's the champion now he really has that mindset of a champion he's really rounded out his abilities to be able to fight anywhere anytime and any aspect of the sport you know what i mean Francis, you did a hell of a job. The co-main event, Woodley, Woodley, Woodley. I bet 50 bucks on you, man. What happened? You were looking beautiful. I couldn't believe Woodley was the underdog. I, you know what? I was showing my... I'm, I'm going to make this wrap into my own personal life for just one second. I was showing my dad this fight. He was watching it with me. They were showing highlights of Tyron's previous fights and highlights of Luke's previous fights. My dad said, why didn't you bet the house on Tyron? This guy is scary as fuck. If Tyron walked into my house right now, I'd leave. If he had one tan behind his back. That's what my dad said, okay? Look, he's a scary individual. He has such huge knockout power. I th he's Listen, he's on a three-fight skid against the top three welterweights in his division, okay? It's not anything to be ashamed of. I thought being fighting number 10 would be easy. You know what I mean? And then he goes out and gets submitted doing what we all wanted him to do by the way we were all asking him come out more aggressive stop holding things back throw those fucking hands more tyron make yourself look like you want to be there look a little meaner look a little scarier and he did everything and still lost i mean it's almost crazy when you look at the fight it's like the first real significant strike luke landed on him broke him and Tyron was dropping bombs that you could see did da excuse me, damage on Luke. But they weren't enough to finish him at any point. But Luke just... I mean, look, I'm falling victim right now to what I just said earlier. Don't down the lose. Don't down the loser. Up the winner. Luke showed a remarkable chin, excellent striking, and the ability to submit a world championship level fighter. Okay? That's just what it is my hats off to luke you know what i mean i can't wait to see what comes next he's just submitted number seven i say it's him and if no one in the top five heeds michael chiesa it's him and michael chiesa to see who has to get into the top five that's what i think needs to happen now man t wood t wood t wood if, if you if you were t wood would you go to bellator now would you drop out the ufc if you were dana would you cut t wood now after seeing a performance where he really did seem to have some fire in him you know some resemblance of the old t wood you know what i mean i mean he really let those hands fly i thought he was gonna win i bet 50 bucks on him i and i i watching the fight i really thought those bombs he was landing was putting serious damage on luke even though i know luke has a hell of a chin we've seen him take spinning back elbows a fuck ton of things to the chin and he still stands and ends up knocking people out i didn't think he can handle the bombs tyron has but i want to i want to ask y'all an idea i saw in the comments of the streaming service i was watching for this fight and the UFC's Instagram comments on after the fight that people think Tyron should move up to 185. And the logic behind this is Tyron's 30 fucking six, okay? He used to fight in a higher weight class when he was in high school rest or high school fighting, I believe. Don't fucking quote me on that. I'm a fucking idiot. But he cuts down a lot of weight to get to 170 and at a higher age it's a very diminishing thing to do to yourself to cut down that high do you guys think he would fare any better at 185 fighting people like let's say paulo costa izzy robert whittaker uh, i mean we all saw how he did with Ken's kevin gaston but as a 185er i mean marvin vittori i mean jack hermanson uh, jared cannonier i mean how do you guys think T Wood at 185 fares? Do you think it's the exact same thing? Do you think he gets? Do you think he'll ha he'll be able to stand his ground and not get knocked out as easily? 
take take shots better at 185 cutting less weight if fighting at a more natural weight i think it'd be a good idea okay but i'm also a fucking idiot so you know what i mean and against another i know a fucking another hyperbole i'm not a fucking idiot but you know what i mean I think it would be a good idea just to try something new. He's on a four skid loss against people in welterweight. And honestly, he just lost number 10. What's he going to do? Fight number 15? I mean, how low are you going to go? You know what I mean? Like, I think if he came out at 185, it'd be a good look for him. A fresh, fresh start. You know what I mean? We can see what he's like at 185. I believe he used to fight at 180 or 185 earlier in his career. But, man, Woodley, I just can't wait to see where this road takes you. Vicente Luque, my hat's off to you. Sugar Sean versus Almeida. Sugar Sean has excellent striking. He put on a master class of striking. However, he is still a bit new to the game, and he's making some novice mistakes, leaving his hands down, not having, a, not having things to guard his face when he's going in to get these big right-hand shots. Still, oh, by another not going in for the kill when you've landed a knockdown i mean look every fight doesn't have to end in a walk-off ko you did it once it was cool okay you can do it a fuck ton of other times it'll be just like the first time get the w okay sugar sean you won this fight my hat's off to you but if after you scored that knockdown in round one and let almeida get up you lost the fight in round two how shitty would you feel knowing that you had him on the brink of defeat and you let it go just because you wanted to get some kind of cool walk-off KO that you didn't even get I mean for now it's cool but when Sugar Sean starts facing much higher level opponents ranked opponents in bantamweight I think he's gonna have to get a lot more serious and I don't think that that's gonna be something we can afford to see too much from him if we want to see him continue to be a top contender in the division I mean, you can't just sit back and let your opponent get up like that, walk around like this because you thought you won the fight and hope that the, because the referee sees you do that, he'll stop the fight. It's not going to work every time and you don't want to risk it every time. This time it worked. My hat's off to you. I made it look great, but you were better this night. You got the dub. But you know what? I don't think things like that are necessary. They're cool when it works, but not worth it when it doesn't work. You know what I mean? Anyways, let me know how you guys think the UFC 260 card went. Let me know what you think of and new with Francis. Let me know what, who you think Luke should fight next. Let me know who you think Sugar Sean should fight next. As always, I'm Ed Rafa Babayova of the Intellectual Dopes on MMA Comedy. And I will see y'all next time. <laughs>